Hey everybody, Josh Sigurdsson, World Alternative Media here, and we are joined by the one and only David Icke. First of all, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Pleasure, mate. Excellent. So I wanted to ask you about something that's been very prevalent in the media lately, which is this idea of QAnon. And I wanted to get your thoughts on whether you think this might be a PSYOP, because it's this whole idea of staying apathetic, trust the plan, wait and see, will Donald Trump get elected again? Maybe we'll just wait for that. And meanwhile, you have this, uh, they, they claim Hillary Clinton and all these people are going to be in Guantanamo Bay in January. But what happens in January? Roger Stone gets arrested. So uh, what are your thoughts on this QAnon theory? Is it a PSYOP or is it legitimate? We have a word in England which I think encapsulates um, this whole theme, and uh, the word is bollocks. Um, you know, I've been, a, I've been on this road a long time, and I see the cycles, and this is a cycle that I've seen. W when I was um, in North America, way back in the 90s, um, uh, on this road when no one wanted to know then, people were telling me basically the same story, that um, the good guys, because you know, it's like Hitler said, keep your bloody propaganda simple. The good guys are gonna arrest the bad guys, right? And there's all the good guys are getting together in the military and the intelligence, and they're gonna arrest the bad guys. And, and you know, every now and again, you get given a date, which I don't put in my diary, by the way, because it passes. Um, and I, I've, um, I've come across this so many times. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's just like a recurring pattern. Oh, what shall we call it this time? And, 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 and it, it just repeats itself. Um, and, you know, if you look at a... Uh, I'll give you an analogy of what this is about, or in, in part what it's about. Um, in Israel, um, we have had, uh, Israel-Palestine, we have had uh, uh, a, a long period of uh, talks, talks about talks, roadmaps, talks about roadmaps, roadmaps about talks. And so it's gone on. Um, and it never got anywhere. You know why? It was never meant to. What has it been doing? Buying time. And as that time has elapsed, more and more illegal settlements have been built in Palestinian land to the point where there's two-state solution, which is what people say, oh, I believe in a two-state solution. Excuse me, have you seen what's going on? There aren't two states. Um, because the, the time has been bought to make a two-state solution impossible. So now this, what are they saying now? Oh, well, we, a one-state solution. Yeah, it's all along, right? So when you have these these cycles of this, the good guys are going to uh, uh, arrest the bad guys. It's buying time. Oh, well, I don't really have to do anything then because they're going to arrest the bad guys. And so it goes on. You know, uh, uh, and it's, it's just, uh, in many ways, an excuse to do nothing. You know, I, I, I got involved, I, you know, I leave it alone usually, but there was one, I won't go into the people involved, although I, I've mentioned them in my books, um, where um, they, they, were ki they kept giving this the date of when the good guys were going to arrest the bad guys, right? And it was, it was on a radio show and stuff. And the guy had this um, fella on who was anonymous, we can't say who, who it is because, um, you know, he's, he'll be in danger, but he's going to tell us how the good guys are going to arrest the bad guys and when they're going to do it. Well, hold on a second. First of all, he was on the bloody phone, right? Right? So they can't work out where he is when he's on the phone for two hours to a radio show, right? So please. And, but you are going to arrest the bad guys and you tell them the date. I mean, come on. I'm sitting there going, I'm going to wake up in a minute. Pinch me. Ouch. No, it's real. And of course, the date passed. And what did they do? They give another date. That date passed. And, and years later, we're still waiting. So it, it's, it's just a recurring theme. And, and please don't, don't let people fall for it um, because um, it's just buying time. Get involved. Get, get, get engaged. You know, the cavalry's not coming over the 
the, over the horizon. We are the bloody cavalry. And apathy so often begets dependence. And dependence is exactly what any government in the world would want. They're, they're subjects to be on their knees, begging them to help them and solve the problems they created. And we're seeing similar things in places like Venezuela, which of course had a tyrannical government, but also has been manipulated by the U.S. government. But now Trump announces this guy Juan Guaido as the legitimate leader of uh, Venezuela, who 80% of Venezuelans had never heard of, uh, worked under a guy from the IMF. And the first thing he does is ask for an IMF loan. I mean, these faceless movements seem to be popping up all over the world in times of great struggles. Uh, what do you think uh, about this entire phenomenon? Well, I mean, Venezuela is the most blatant uh, United States coup on a country um, in, in history, really. And think of the competition. There have been enough of them. Um, and, you know, when people, you know, when I say that a few people are manipulating events, I mean, you, you, today you can, you, can, you can point this out so clearly. You had the project for the New American Century uh, group uh, formed in the 1990s that um, produced the document in September 2000 listing a series of countries in the Middle East and elsewhere they wanted to regime change. And, um, and then uh, because of 9-11, which was the excuse they wanted, um, they started uh, attempting and picking off these regime changes on the list, like Libya and Syria, they tried, and Iran they want, and Iraq, etc. Um, and then uh, all these years later, you look at um, the Trump administration, and Trump, of course, one of the things he said in uh, his um, campaign is they wanted to stop having American uh, government and military in interfering in the affairs of other countries. Well, I, I, don't, I, think, I think he must have forgotten that bit. So, um, so now uh, they've um, uh, deleted the nuclear agreement with Iran because they want that to kick off because that's on the list. And it, it had gone quiet because there was this nuclear agreement, you know, the, the, the regime changing there and justifying it was, was now a problem. So what happens? They, they, um, they drop the nuclear deal and bring the conflict in. Uh, well, where I'm going with this is, of course, the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, the psychopath psychopath, who's never seen a country he didn't want to invade as long as he weren't there. He was at the front line when the first bullet was fired. He'd be under a bed in Washington when the second one went off. These, these people are just cowards. They want other people to do their business. Anyway, he's driving now the uh, demonization of uh, Iran. He's driving the demonization of uh, Venezuela. And John Bolton was a stalwart of the project of the New American Century back in the 90s, which, which started this process of regime change in the Middle East. And then who does... Um, uh, who does Trump uh, make a special envoy to uh, Venezuela uh, recently when it, when it started to uh, kick off? Special envoy to the Venezuelan coup, he should be called. But Elliot Abrams, um, who is from the Project for the New American Century, a man with a grotesque history of um, being involved in mass killings of people in Central America, uh, on behalf of the, uh, uh, the terrorist American government, under whichever party, just the same. And so um, you, you see the patterns and you see how the same personalities keep popping up. It's so blatant. And this is so we should all just trust the plan and wait for something to happen. Uh, yeah, and yeah, let's do that, yeah. <laughs> I, I reckon that John Bolton's gonna be arrested by the good guys. I'll tell you when, I'll look at my diary. No, please. Uh, but the po this point is another pattern. Number one, um, you uh, want to... See, if you keep invading countries, like, like Iraq, if you keep doing it, then people see the pattern. Hey, oh, wait, they're invading someone else. So th the best way to avoid that pattern being seen, in other words, that you're picking off countries according to a script, is to uh, get the, pu the public in that country to regime change for you. 
and this is what's called a people's revolution. This is what the Arab Spring was all about. Do, do, do we, the, what was benefiting Arabs? Look what's happened to them as a result of the Arab Spring. Um, in Egypt, um, they, they've got rid of a tyrant, and now they're, they're, they've got a military junta running the place. I mean, oh yeah, Arab Spring, yeah, we're all free now. Because it, it was never meant to be that. Um, but this is the pattern. There's a, um, a network called the Open Society Foundations, which are massively funded to the tune of tens of billions by George Soros. And they specialize, specialize in many things, but they specialize in um, creating unrest, training and funding and developing agitators to start uh, uh, protest movements. They've done it in Ukraine, they've done it all over the place. Did it in the Arab Spring. Uh, some of these Open Society Foundation um, executives have, have, have bragged to people who've gone public with it about the fact that they were the people that started the agitation in Libya against Gaddafi. So um, another part of this um, is to then target the country with sanctions, which is what they're doing to Iran, it's what they're doing to Venezuela. Because what do sanctions do? Sanctions create economic deprivation. And what does that do? It starts to get unrest in the country because people are economically deprived. They wonder, you know, where their food's coming from. And so you're building this, um, this unrest through sanctions and through uh, agitation. And then what you do, and, uh, that, uh, you know, I've gone into this in, in, in the books. That a lot of people don't maybe realize this. But um, George Soros was um, absolutely... Uh, centrally involved in changing uh, before this whole Arab Spring started in changing which the UN eventually uh, agreed to uh, the definition of sovereignty the definition of sovereignty before was the government of the country right so if you wanted to send the boys into a country right invade it whatever you were you were invading the sovereignty of that country what soros did he started it all off it's all in my books and then the the un had a vote and agreed to it his sovereignty became the people of the country which means now that they can say um the sovereignty of the country the people are being abused by their government so we're going in now send the boys in to protect the sovereignty of the people. So they're, they're, they're over this breaking the sovereignty. So this is how it works when you put it all together. Soros's um, uh, networks go in, they start the agitation. The, 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 the sanctions are uh, uh, targeting the country to create more deprivation. And then um, uh, the uh, American government says, oh, the country are deprived. Yeah, because of you, you buggers, overwhelmingly. Um, and, um, and therefore, we've got to do something to, to protect the people. And then um, when the, the point is reached where the agitation starts, and this is why they brought this Guado guy in as a, as a focal point to, to uh, uh, create the, um, the unrest against the government, then um, they eventually, if they need to, they, the neocons come in. The neocons come in, your, your Boltons and your... Your, um, your, your, your neocon stalwarts uh, through the military, and then there's a military intervention. This is what happened, of course, classically in, um, in Libya. The, the, you had the Soros uh, networks create the agitation and the, uh, the unrest in Libya, and then they said, he's killing his own people, and then they send the boys in, NATO and America and Britain. And this is, this is what, it, what is happening. And that tells you something uh, that a lot of people don't realize that George Soros, who is supposed to be um, the godfather of the left, and the neocons of the right, they answer to the same masters. His organization, Soros organization, creates the groundwork. The neocons send the troops in. And this is how it works. And this is what we're seeing in Venezuela. And if Venezuela um, doesn't go uh, uh, quietly, in other words, it doesn't fall to a people's revolution, then um, there's a very good chance that they'll they'll send the military in, uh, and, and they'll end up like a Libya or a Yemen or a, all the other countries that the U.S. has destroyed. One of the, again, um, w w what what I'm always doing, I'm looking for patterns. Mm -hmm. You look at the patterns in South America now. 
far right. You've got a far right uh, president in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, pro America, pro Israel. Uh, same in 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 uh, Colombia, um, and and now they're targeting Venezuela. And what you'll see um, uh, as this goes on, they're going to start um, targeting Bolivia, mm -hmm. which is a, 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 a basically an anti anti American uh, government. And there's uh, so many problems with this deception of Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, there's always a deception. They always have to follow one deception by another in order to keep their uh, in, their entire empire working and uh, upright. And we see that with you know Donald Trump dropping or looking to drop more bombs than Obama did. And again, if if Trump was the inside or the outsider that came in to destroy the establishment, he'd have a bullet in his head by now. But I wanted to um, finally ask you about uh, are you optimistic about the future? Are, are you optimistic that there is a great awakening despite the attempted distractions by the media uh, off and on throughout the world? Oh, well, yes, I am. Um, and I'm seeing it all the time. Uh, more and more people are questioning the world. They're questioning reality. They're questioning events. They're not uh, taking uh, uh, the official narrative without question. Of course, still the great majority do, but 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 nothing like the majority that, you know, I've been on this road a long time. I remember what it was like 30 years ago. Cool, dear. I mean, you, 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 uh, you, you were really struggling to find uh, many people who would be open to looking at the world that way. Now, it's, it's, it's massive compared with that. So we are moving along. And, you know, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact, because I travel all the time, and you meet people, you, you see what is happening away from the microphones and away from the cameras. See, the, the official narrative of everything basically dominates the camera and dominates the microphones. Um, that's, what you, that's what's pounded out 24-7 through the mainstream media. It's pounded out through, through politics, the official version of everything. And you can get the impression that um, there is a, there is a belief, a massive belief in um, the official narrative because that's all people hear. But when you travel and you talk to people um, in all different cultures around the world, there is a very different mentality out there that is not seeing the world uh, through the lens of the official narrative. And, you know, it, it, it's incredibly encouraging to see and chat with people um, and see just how streetwise they're becoming um, about about the world. I mean, we've got in Britain um, the big thing about Brexit going on, uh, leaving the European Union, and that's a classic because um, the referendum two years ago voted to come out of the European Union, which is the last thing that the European Union uh, cabal uh, and um, the, the hidden hand behind it wanted. So they spent two years now trying to thwart it, to stop it happening. And what this has done has actually street-wised people, um, especially um, you know, those that, um, that voted to come out, but other, other people too who voted to stay in, but I've been watched the events of the last two years have gone, well, I'll do it. If we had another referendum, I'd, I'd vote to come out because they're starting to see how uh, the, the, the will of the people and the so-called um, democratic will of the people is, um, is basically ignored if it, if it doesn't fit the direction that they want the world to go. So, and, and the more that um, this Orwellian um, society a global society starts to break the surface, which it has to do if it's going to become reality, the more it's not a sometime over the rainbow esoteric concept, it's actually in your face. And, and, and the reason I started out on a, 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 basically an a, a ongoing open-ended world speaking tour in 2016 was because I saw that how people were feeling uneasy about the world, uneasy about what was happening. But the, obviously, if you haven't done the research, you can't really put words to it. Um, and and um, so I'm incredibly optimistic, but um, we have a hell of a challenge, that's for sure. But um, 
I'm, I'm glad we're where we are now, and not where we were 30 years ago when I when I when I um, when I set out. Because if 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 the awakening of of people was still at 1990 levels, then um, basically it would be game set and match by now. We just can't get distracted. We have to keep our eyes on the goal where we're we're heading this whole time. We can't allow ourselves to be distracted and um, uh, pulled into these crazy faceless movements that attempt to um, basically keep us apathetic and dependent. That's always the end of the story. So anyway, uh, I really appreciate you talking with us today. Um, Can you just tell everyone where, if they somehow don't know, uh, where they can find your books and uh, all your work and support the work you do? Yeah, they can find uh, the books and everything and at davidike.com. And uh, of course, there's a, the, the news is on there every uh, day uh, from uh, uh, a different perspective of the official narrative. And I've got a film coming out called Renegade, uh, which is going to be out in, um, in uh, April, May. And there's some premieres. There's um, one in New York and uh, one in Toronto and one in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, one in Manchester, one in London, in um, in late March, um, and um, so uh, I hope that this, and I think it will. It's a movie about my life, but but my life is just the theme. It's absolutely chock a block with um, with information about how the world's manipulated, and I, um, I I I hope that it will get uh, a lot of people who um, are new to this. Um, to see that um, the world's not like they thought it was because the more the merrier on on that uh, score for sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Like what you see here, OM? Don't forget to check the links below. Go fund me, Patreon. We can't do it without you. Any donation is very much appreciated, especially as we are so heavily demonetized and censored by YouTube. As these guys come in and flag all of our content as hate speech, the shadow banning is getting really bad, guys. Also, check our Bitcoin address right here on the screen or in the description below. We really appreciate it. And of course, check us out at the Red Pill Expo 2019. Of course, the great G. Edward Griffin and so many other incredible Incredible speakers will be there. Our link for that is below as well. And we cannot forget Mike Maloney's goldsilver.com, which you can also find in the description. One of the greatest market and monetary historians out there. We really encourage everyone to check that out. But until next time, this is Josh Sigurdsson signing out from World Alternative Media. Find the truth, be the change. I'm sure you have already changed people's minds in your young age because you're involved and I like that.